just straight. You can just start recording. You know, I don't give a shit. Yeah, Whenever right Bill's now. ready, yeah. Yeah, I just do it right now. I could, okay, because so, there's so much, I mean, I could talk to you for hours. And then the other, well, listen, we're not I mean, gonna talk for I, hours, I mean, but we'll talk for a while. But what I'm explaining to you, I don't know what parts of this you want. I want okay. all of it. Okay, because there's, there's, there's incident, but there's a lot of, also about why he was here and this was good for him and he liked being here and he wanted to stay here. So we'll get into that after we do the walkthrough. Yeah. I want you to just to walk through what happened that yeah. night, what okay, you were doing. So let's start at the top. So anyway, my friend, he, he had this garage right here. Okay. And we would park the big fish and we'd bring our fish right here and we have the garage open and we're sitting here with a table and we're cleaning albacore tuna. Yeah. Oh, we had so many. The fishing's phenomenal out here. And we had 25 of them. And we were filleting them and skinning them and filleting them. And our friend Wino was dragging the carcasses over to Santa Clara Point where he'd throw them in the water so he could fish that night right there. And you know, we're drinking beers, yeah. hanging out, having a good time. Sure. And ran out of beer. Okay. And I had no idea what was going on over there, but we do. We kept seeing the helicopter flying around, okay. and circling around. So, so let's I, walk through then what, so I had no what idea you what saw on your on. route that night, and right. just tell us then what you heard and what you saw. Okay. So we're cleaning, and I said, okay, well, I got to go grab some more beer. I'm going to go get it. Okay. So I walk this so way. So we're walking this. Yeah. Way. Okay. I just go down there. I'm going to the liquor store. Okay. I'm heading on down to the liquor store, and I'm literally just heading on down. And you know, the place is about the same, it's dirty, you know, but you know, it's a fun place to be, you know. A lot of girls, a lot of parties, um, good place to hang out. And this building is different, but I come around the corner here. Okay. And I get, bam, 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 six shots. You heard the shot. And I jumped back. Okay. All right. Okay, and All there's right. a guy on a bicycle who was also there, and he spun on one, and he was gone. Yeah, you know, and I backed up, and I thought, what? And so I, you don't I, see anything, but you're no. Kind of, okay. And I look, and I don't see anything, and then I see the the two cops. Okay. And we knew the cops. They're bike cops. They're badass dudes. They're just assholes. They're here to mess with everybody's day. We've seen them for months. They've been out here busting everybody for drinking on the beach or drinking anywhere or just just. Just being assholes, you know? Okay. And I think they were probably here because they were assholes. Because this is kind of a safe place to keep an asshole cop, you know? Well, they got their kill and they got them right here. And I look and I seen the dude land here. I'm like, whoa, what the hell is that? And I saw the cops. And, and you're here the whole time? No. So then, okay. then I start watching. I saw that those guys dead. So, where, so let's look so, at it from here. So, right? what? so this is where yeah, Demetrius right, was. Right here. Okay. He's right there on the sidewalk. Okay. And so I, so I come over here. So I'm walking over here and I'm like, the hell, you know? Two cops. And I'm like the first guy in the seat. I don't think so. There was another guy who was a, I'm not sure. But I know that I came up here and I'm, I'm focused on this. Thing. He's the man right here. Okay. And there by crossing to the scene, I'm like, dude, somebody help that guy. Yeah. But somebody needs to help that guy. Dude. So who are you saying that to? The two cops. So you're t you're talking directly to the police. Yeah. And you're saying somebody's and what are they doing? As you're as you're processing the kill, just processing the scene, calling the ambulance, telling everybody get the head, stay back. Are they touching him? Are they? No, no. And he's alive. And and I'm like, dude, somebody's got to give this guy CPR or something. But honestly, CPR wouldn't help him because he's alive. It's hard to beat him. He's breathing. So I was just thinking, somebody's got to help him. You know, and they weren't. They were kind of expressionless, you know, but they were um, like guy here, another dude standing over here, kind of blocking me. And I was thinking, I felt like I wanted to go help them. And how many people overall were there? No, no, but, uh, nobody wants to hang out with cops. You know what I mean? So there weren't a lot of people around. I remember one other girl because I started yelling. I was like, "Dude, give the guy CPR!" And then the, the girl started saying that, "Give him CPR!" And help how that long? Guy. Help that guy. Like how long since you heard the gunshots? So when you're yelling, give him CPR. You know, it only, it, it took about, I want to say about six or seven minutes before, because I think they had an ambulance on the way, right. you know, and the ambulance came in here and they actually parked right here facing the opposite direction. And they, and one of the cops finally told me, like, I was like, dude, give him CPR, give him CPR. And one cop, like, he was kind of slumped over and they, they rolled him onto his back 
and he just started giving CPR right up as the ambulance was already there. It had already been five minutes. And he was like blowing was his mouth, was or was he out. just pumping his chest? Yeah, he just getting yeah, That way he could claim, yeah, we tried to give him CPR, you know what I mean? I know what they were doing, but they weren't trying to help him. They were just trying to check the boxes, you know? And then the other cop comes around to me and he says, get the fuck out of here. And I was like, whoa. I just backed up and went back over here. So let's walk down Queenstown, okay? And tell us a little bit about, you know, what this area was like. And we'll talk more after that about your feelings about why this happened and what you saw and how you processed it since, okay? So I just want to get an idea of kind of this, this walkway, what was going on here. You know, you told me these, there were different buildings and these buildings were different. So if you could just kind of... Well, they weren't much. I mean, this was the same old dirty wall. This building was a little bit different, but same kind of stuff though. This tree wasn't here. Um, you can see gas meters, this stuff's fairly new. But a lot of this has just been remodeled. There was old doors here. This was here. Um, I just ran into the building in this unit. About the same. There was a building here that's was open a parking lot. But I can tell you right here, like there was a lot of people lived in this building. This was a party spot, you know what I mean? Okay, so I had let's just stop here. right here. And kind of, you know, look at these buildings here. So this was this, the party spot, like was, these two these two buildings. Yeah, it was actually three, you know, we okay. call them three buildings. But it was, this one was kind of like people with, like you said, hot the rail and stuff. So 721 were, is where Randy West and Demetrius lived. They lived up on the... Okay, well, my friend Corey Wagner lived right here at 720. So they were neighbors. He lived there, And yeah. did he ever talk about... Knowing Dino well, I'll give his number. You can give him a call and talk to him. No, I meant, do you, but you haven't talked to him about it. You know, I never really talked to him about it. You know, I mean, we talked to him like, whoa, dude, got killed. Yeah. But my friend Corey, he was sitting there cleaning fish still. He didn't know anything about it. He's like, where you been? Where's the beer? I'm like, dude, they just killed a guy. Didn't you hear the shots? I was freaked out. But the whole thing happened over like a like 12, 14 minute period. It was over. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they got him here. They intimidated him. They got him to run. He ran that way. I mean, numb chucks? What are they, Bruce Lee or something? I mean, they chased him down. They beat him, they beat him, they beat him, they shot him. They threw him into an ambulance and they were gone. And he was pronounced dead, like right when he got to Scripps, basically. So. And, you know, I'd love to know who the ambulance driver is and all that stuff. They shot him six times right here. And that was it. And then they hustled him out of here. And I know that people say there was like 13 shots or something like that. Yeah. Like, there were six shots here. I don't know when they shot him the other seven times, but they shot him six times here. Well, the aut autopsy is, is really clear <laughs> that there are 12 shots that entered his body, but there's then one other uh, number that they have, and it says multiple wounds, most likely from graze wounds. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying multiple. Well, that really means to me at least 15, but I'm mm -hmm. saying, well, I'm gonna, we're going to at least say it's 13. There are six shots right here. And I believe it was one cop shot. Is it possible though? Is it possible that you just heard the last six shots? No. And there's no way that two cops drew their guns and, saw, and shot six shots at the same time. There's no way that happens. And there's no way that just two cops just both pulled their guns and started shooting at the same time. One cop got pissed. He was pissed. And he pulled his gun, he shot that guy. Why was he pissed? Because the dude was owning him. He's got nunchucks and stuff, and guys not submitting. You know, there's some cops do that. Have you read about Sagon Penn? No. That happened just a few years earlier. That happened over here in oh, San yeah. Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Dude freaking killed a cop, grabbed his gun, shot him, and then drove over somebody else. He was found innocent of killing those cops. And then the one police officer that testified against the cop who got killed, who said he was a racist dude, that guy was kind of forced, retired, moved to Washington. Somebody broke into his house in Washington, shot him in the head after they got him to write an apology letter for testifying against the police. Look into that. That's all in everybody's head. Okay. I mean, that happened in the like mid eighties, but still most people know about all that stuff, you know? Uh -huh. So, so like, you know cops are bad asses. There was a cop that was raping women along here. They finally caught him because he shot himself in the foot. You know? There was another cop, the cops that was, this happened like, I want to say 2015 or something when there's a cop in gas lamp raping women. All right. Well, so all, so these, this, this was, a, this was a, a period of time when police owned it. I mean, you couldn't testify against them. They were locked up. FBI, CIA, DA. 
So anybody's going to say anything against a cop, they're they're going to they're going to meet their doom. Nobody's going to say anything against a cop. They had impunity. Okay. So so when when it, not all of them, I'm sure, there's really good cops out there. There's a lot of them doing really good hard work. They're doing the right job. But every once in a while, you get a hunter, and the hunter wants to get his kill. And that's who Demetrius ran into. One of those two cops was a hunter. And at the end of that, when they finished shoot, when he finished shooting him the, those six times, and they got him into an ambulance, and they were getting him out of there, I don't know what happened after that. Maybe talk the other cop into shooting him too. I really don't know. All I know is that you can like look at the testimonies. There's six shots, well, and I they have. hustled him out of there. I mean, I have, and that's I know. And you I think, would say it's contradictory because yeah. there are. I mean, again, there are people that have said six shots. Mm -hmm. There are there are people in the depositions that says six shots and the way they have been able to explain how there mm -hmm. are at least 12 bullet wounds and mm -hmm. then multiple graze wounds because you know he was shot 12 times so how did that happen you're saying there's no way it happened simultaneously no but also david becker whom we interviewed on july 11th mm -hmm said that he heard shots from his place, ran out into the street about a half a block, and then saw them shoot about six times while while Demo was laying there. Mm. So you think after he was laying on the ground, they shot him well, six I, times? Well, I'm not saying, all yeah. I'm saying is no. what David Becker said. Yeah. What I'm saying is they shot him at least 13 times. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they shot I him six- I wasn't here that night. Right, and they shot him six times right here. That's what I know. And no, they didn't shoot him a bunch of times and then I came around the corner because you hear a gunshot very loud. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever shot a gun, but it's yeah. loud. It's very, very, very loud. And, you know, I think they were shooting probably nine millimeters or something. Nonetheless, I come around the corner, bam, 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 done. And then I, I backed up and kind of hit and looked and watched, and they just started processing the kill scene. And they wanted to get him out of there because they didn't want a big bunch of people gathering. And honestly, did you hear them say anything as there besides they, what you said? No, Can you kind of go over again what they said in that moment and what's going on? They didn't say anything at all. Did they you didn't. hear? Did you hear Demetrius say anything? No, no, he was down. He was breathing, but he was down. I mean, he was he was hurt, you know, but he was down and breathing, and he was I wouldn't say he's conscious, but you could tell he was he was breathing and he, he wasn't moving much, but there was some movement. And that's why I was freaking out. I was saying, saying, do something with this. Give this guy CPR. Give him CPR or something. They wouldn't talk to me or acknowledge me. And it wasn't until, you know, I guess maybe I got a little too aggressive because I stepped in and just started saying, what the hell, man? You let this guy die. You're just give him CPR or something. And that was when the cop menaced me. And what did he say? Get the fuck out of here. And you did. Yeah. yeah. I just, they just shot a guy. What am I gonna do? Fight like that? Huh? They shot a guy for nothing. I don't know, cause I didn't see what happened. But I looked, and I could kind of tell by the way the scene was. It was like I didn't feel like. Um, well, I don't know if it was justified or not. I don't know the reasons, but you could see the guy, and you could tell he's not like a gangbanger. He doesn't look like a badass. He doesn't look like he was robbing the place. He looked like a straight up dude that was just enjoying the beach yeah. so so I, I i could i just kind of inferred from that that like they shouldn't have shot him but it wasn't until later when I, others started coming out and then sam came back and sam was crying and he was saying um you know why they shoot him why they shoot him he was upset because he then, knew him well i don't know if he knew him but but he didn't want anybody shot in front of the store yeah and then but then um police came in and started interviewing him and then I'm sure they took all the film and everything and after that we'd come in and I asked Sam like oh my god what he said don't talk about it well, he didn't want to lose the store I mean again so what happened so what happened then with the tapes what did you do you have any idea what happened with the because they're, yeah, they're police took them and they're on all right I mean what are you gonna do okay you want a liquor store cops come in give us the tapes Where they are Please don't mess with my store. You know, I mean, that's all you can do. What can you do? Say no. They just shot a guy for nothing. What all are right. you going to say? No? Let's walk up here, Bill. 
and I want you to just kind of describe. So these two places where like people were hanging out a lot. Oh yeah. yeah tell us about scene, tell yeah. us about Mission Beach. What kind of a place is it in 1999? What kind of a community is it? Talk to us about the culture of Mission Beach. Well, Mission Beach was a different place back then. I mean, still it was dirty, you know, a lot of broken concrete. Um, a lot of these giant, big, expensive buildings weren't here. Okay, so was this building here? No. So in other words, this would be an unobstructed view yeah. of, of the sunset, right, of the ocean. Right, right, right. So that's this why Randy and Demetrius, you know, a bunch of times would just step over this balcony. Sure chill out watch the sunset here yeah it's everybody's common. barbecuing hanging out but that's pretty beers. common here too like the, is there a, there's a lot of intermingling right oh yeah there's big parties yeah. i mean that's that's why he was here this was a great scene this was a cool place to be i mean there wasn't any of the racial stuff going on there wasn't any it was just parties everybody was just having a great time and the cops would come and break up a party and another one would pop up and people were having a lot of fun and but mostly girls everywhere there was just beautiful girls and I'm sure he was here because he liked girls so no doubt he was right here they played volleyball down the way about a quarter mile down that was a big place to play volleyball and where was that what's the name of that you know okay. just volleyball courts down there <laughs> okay, you know? in Mission Beach so okay. I heard he played volleyball a lot yeah. he would have been just playing right down here just a little bit right out front here there really wasn't much and it wasn't much of a hangout but every once in a while the surf would break out here really well so a lot of surfers would gather a lot of cute girls in bikinis would gather no doubt he enjoyed that um, a lot of guys did so we're here for we're having sure. fun we're partying we're having a good time it was really a lot of fun police started intervening in a lot of this and trying to shut down the party you know so we started seeing a lot more of that presence and it started changing about then the boardwalk used to be half and let's the walk out there okay so yeah i mean a lot of people would come up at sunset they would sit out here on the boardwalk watch watch sunset drink a beer relax enjoy and uh oh yeah got, got, got walking. so 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 where right are the here courts? yeah yeah, volleyball courts were just past 20 down there a little bit. Well, most of your volleyball was down there. Um, boardwalk was half the width. You can see the new concrete and the old concrete. There used to be patios that would extend out here. And they took everybody's patio away because it was, it was an easement. And they, they poured concrete out to here. But at the time, it was a lot narrower. So a lot closer, tighter mingling. You know, people coming both ways, it was a lot, lot tighter, you know. Right on. A lot of fun, it was crowded, you know. How people, long did you live here? About four years. And when did you leave? I want to say, um, 99, end of 99. And then, did you follow kind of what happened? Yeah. With, with the case and? Yeah. What and what was your hesitation about not coming forward until you found out that there was a documentary being made? Well, I just seen a dude get shot for no reason. I mean, I didn't see him get shot, but I, I heard that it was right there in front of me. And I came right. up on the scene and the impunity in which the police just killed him and processed that kill scared the shit out of me, man. I just couldn't believe that they could actually just do that. Yeah. Like, I, I thought they had to really have a reason. To, but the way that they that they killed him and processed and cleaned that up and got those tapes and shoved him into a thing and got him out of there and then everybody circled the wagons and they were able to fend off any legal you know recourse and the guy would walk away it was just clean for them it was nothing and i saw that and that i didn't want to be on the losing end of that like even right now it scares me because you know you guys are making a movie and like i give you my piece of it and i leave well, this is from the best pissed off cops. Maybe a lot of them don't really give a shit, but there's going to be a few of them that are really fucking angry. And so I know a lot of people don't want to be on the bad end of some cops. Yeah. Like, who wants that? It's only because now that, that people are being more aware of what's going on, but that may only just be very short-lived. Yeah. They've already closed down Black Lives Matter movements. That's all over with now. They've cleaned that up. That's no longer a threat. So the only thing that's a threat to them, is, well, nothing really. I mean, think about it. They're they're 
people like you who care are coming forward and trying to do something. But now the big scare is, is, is crime. Like, oh my gosh. So right away, they're just gonna, all of this movement, this forward movement to change the culture, I hope it just doesn't step back. Because if it does, people like me are like people who are hated. But the only reason I don't mind doing it right now is because I live in a different state and I'm deep in the woods. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I lived here still, I'd be kind of scared. Yeah. You know? But I know that um, I have friends who live around here and I can introduce you to them, but they'll be scared. They won't want to talk to you because you're here and gone and then who's here every single day is the police. Yeah. And they don't, they don't want that. Yeah. So it's difficult. It's difficult to come forward and actually talk about it. But for me, like, I can't tell you um, any more than, like, what I saw. And I didn't see the beginning of this thing. And I didn't see the actual physical shooting. So I don't know what led up to it. But I can tell you that these police would never allow anyone to dominate them ever. And they will kill before that happens. And so for them, when the guy ran and they should have just said, oh, they should have just said, run, you know, they should have just told him, you know, hey, dude ran, oh, well, no big deal, right? You, you, can, you can catch up to that guy, you know, whatever. I mean, he's not really even wanted other than just to pester him, yeah. you know? So, so what happens is, is they chased him down because they wanted to get a kill. And they know that they could do that with him. And they felt like, hey, you know, uh, have you ever been hunting? No, I never have. Actually. Okay, well, I, I'm not a hunter much, but where I live, actually, I don't hunt, but where I live, a lot of people hunt, and they hunt elk. Okay. And there's a mentality of the people who hunt elk. And elk is a really large animal, a formidable animal. And you can see some people, they just got it in their eyes. They just desperately want to kill an elk they'll do anything to kill an elk they want it so bad and they get the right equipment they're out there super early in the morning they're scoping it out they know where the elk are so when hunting season comes they can hunt well some people are just poachers and they don't care about no hunting season and if they see an elk they grab their their rifle out of their truck and they just shoot it and they even leave it to waste and so there's people that want that kill so bad. They don't want the meat. They just leave the animal to rot. They don't harvest it or anything. They just shoot it and then claim, I got a kill. They need that kill. And so when you've met those people and you see that in them, it's scary. Like they desperately just want to kill something. And every once in a while, I think you're going to find a cop like that. And so they give a bad name to all the rest of them, no doubt. But I think that that's what Demetrius ran into. A guy that desperately wanted to kill a big animal. Well, Bill, I appreciate you coming out and your bravery and your willingness to step forward to this project. Thank you. Yeah. Is uh, there anything else you want to say? I think you said a lot. So. Uh, you know, I feel... I, I feel that um, it's time it's time that the police root out these poachers out of their forces and I hopefully the that the movement that that just happened and the the number of police that quit I, I'm really hoping that those were the ones that were your poachers the ones that need to get their kills and I, I think that the majority of police that are good they need to do something to clean up those forces and get those people out of there because we don't want to end policing, we just don't want poachers who just want to get a kill. And I hope that what you're doing is, can move that forward a little bit more and, and get that to happen. Right on, me too. Thanks, Bill. All right, thanks. It's good meeting you. You too. Yeah.